We are staying with football on the Sports Max Zone. Another edition of the Africa Cup of Nations set to kick off on Saturday in the Ivory Coast. And of course, your home of champions will be bringing you all the action from the biggest football tournament on the continent. And with us to break down what is lining up to be another special tournament is our football ace analyst, Lige Williams. Lige, let's first run through the upgrade? six. Wait, upgrade? did you write this segment? <laughs> Hold on. No, that, Lance, that, is that, that an upgrade? That, that wasn't what was I'm, on I'm, the prompt. I'm, it's so. not the first time that I'm calling him or, or football Lance, ace Lance analyst. Really it's him. the first time I'm hearing, I'm hearing it. No, is I'm, that an upgrade? You have in, promoted, in my, you have in, promoted in, in Mr. Eyes, Williams. It's not an upgrade because I've been labeling him that for several months now. So for several months now, yes. you have given him a promotion, an upgrade. If you want to take it that way, yeah. Did it come he's, with pay? <laughs> well, I mean, why, why are they contesting my no, the term that me. I used to, to present? If no, I'm being like honest, Dave Cameron said I was only asking a question. <laughs> and, and if I'm being honest, I know Lige was the producer for this segment, so I wasn't looking up. I was actually making no, notes. No, I, I, I didn't. I didn't so, write that. You know, Sir Lance just so, is okay. very appreciative of the the quality. No, yeah. he's really been batting for you in the meeting. Yeah, of course, which is right, man. Which okay. is right. All right. And Sir Lance doesn't make much runs. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> okay, continue. I, I didn't then. make a lot of runs the last cricket match I played, but it's okay, uh, uh, Ricardo. Uh, let, let, let's leave that one. Bat on, let's, let's have a look at the groups now, uh, Lish, because um, Africa Cup of Nations football is also uh, is always very, very, very exciting. And for the last decade or so, we've had a different winner. It's every two yeah. years we have had a different winner seven, during the two thousand consecutively. Yes, uh, we have had different winners. So Group A has the hosts. Equatorial Guinea, Guinea-Bissau, and uh, Nigeria, who are multiple champions, three-time champions. How is this group looking? Yeah, you know, um, I, I think how the African Cup of Nations is set up, it's very rare that you're going to see any of the big guns really fall out early because 24 of the 24 contesting teams, 16 go through to the knockout stages. So I think it should be safe sailing for Ivory Coast and Nigeria and maybe a third place from this group as well. But I, I highlighted Ivory Coast and I highlighted Nigeria because there are two teams that are seen as really beacons of African football, especially if you think about it from a European sense looking on. But, you know, as of late, we haven't been seeing either of them really live up to those expectations. You know, the mid-2000s, um, we saw Ivory Coast being labelled as the favourites year on year, but it was really Egypt, a team that we'll get on to, that really won all of those trophies. Um, Nigeria, they're a team that has, their attack is ridiculous, to be honest, you know. But I think they'll be, you know, pegged back a bit because they'll be without their key midfielder in Wilfred Ndidi and their, one of their leading strikers, Victor Boniface, um, he will be out of the competition as well. And so it will be all up to Ossiman. Yeah. Let's see what yes. he can produce. And if Nigeria are going to win this competition, it will be through his goals. Okay, let's look at Group B now and see how the teams are, are stacking up there. Um, uh, Cape Verde, there is Egypt, who um, have been hugely successful, the most successful team in uh, the Africa Cup of Nations, seven-time champions. They were back-to-back-to-back -back -to -back winners in the 2000s decade. Um, Ghana, who are who have been tremendously successful in FIFA age group, like under 17 competitions, but not so much at the at the senior level, and Mozambique. Yeah, um, uh, and the two middle countries there highlighted Egypt and Ghana. You mentioned that Egypt have been wildly successful. They're the most successful team in African Cup of Nations history, the first winners, the only team to win three consecutive titles as well. And, you know, they, they've gotten to two of the last three finals without being successful. So I think if there's pressure on any team, any player, to deliver something in this tournament, I think it would be on Egypt and Mohamed Salah. I think for his reputation, especially seeing that Sadio Mane got his first triumph, Senegal's first triumph the last time out in the Cup of Nations, I think Egypt to really, um, really say that they're the top guns of African football and Mohamed Salah to really put a case forward as one of the best African players of all time, he has to deliver in this tournament. All right, let's look at Group C now for the AFCON. Africa Cup of Nations, Cameroon, 
only Egypt are more successful than they have been in the history of this tournament. But they have got Gambia, Guinea, and the reigning champions to face. Yeah, and it's, it's going to be, a, I think this is the toughest group. Um, Guinea and Gambia are not, not pushovers by any um, stretch of the imagination. Cameroon, they had a relatively successful tournament last time, coming third. They had the top goal scorer, Victor um, Abubakar, Vincent Abubakar, eight goals. That's a stunning return in any international tournament. He'll be returning. A lot of Cameroon's players are aging a bit. Same with Senegal, really. But I th I'm sure they'll be on a high. No team has recorded back-to-back -back Afghan victories since Egypt in the mid-2000s. I think it was 2008-2010. So they'll be looking to really break that curse and try and see if they can push through and get the victory this time. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, of course, we remind you that there's live commentary on Sportsmax 2 on the opening day uh, coming up uh, on, on Saturday as we continue to look at the groups involved here in the Africa Cup of Nations. Group D. Yeah, Algeria, Angola, Burkina Faso and Mauritania. Yeah, I think this should be a pretty straightforward group for Algeria, I think have them as one of the favorites. They won the tournament before the last one. They have retained a lot of their better players. Riyad Mahrez, you know, not anymore of Man City fame, but uh, he's still a fantastic player. Ismail Benassir. Algeria has a lot of really good players. They'll be looking to make a dent in this tournament. It's, I just can't have them as the favorites anymore, but they're definitely one of the favorites. Burkina Faso are also a very, usually, a very solid unit. Yeah. Yeah, so Algeria looking comfortable here in Group D. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. How about Group E? How were we looking for that? Yeah, you know, this is a group that could go several different ways. You know, you have Tunisia, who are a team that's usually very solid. They have gone to the knockout stages in the last 10 editions of the tournament. South Africa, they're always a team looking to do well as well. Namibia, I'm not quite sure how they'll fare in this group. And Mali, they have one of the best young cores, especially you spoke about how Africans can really produce at the unders level. Mali went to the under 17 World Cup this year and placed third. A lot of, you know, I'm not quite sure they didn't pick so many of players from that squad. You know, Ibrahim Diara, I think he's one of the brightest young players in world football. He wasn't selected. So I'm not quite sure what was the rationale behind that. But Mali are a team that can make some waves in this tournament. And finally, Group F and uh, the team stacking up there. Uh, and I think the, Morocco, Tanzania mm -hmm. and Zambia. Yeah, and I think this is a group that has the the favorite for most people. Uh, Morocco, you know, Morocco. They went to the semi-finals of the World Cup. They're a team that, you know, really captured the hearts of everyone who was watching on, and they still retain all of that quality. Um, when you speak about from the back to the front, Bono in goal, Agard at the back. Amrabat and Uani in the midfield, uh, and then Ziyech, who isn't coming into the competition in a lot of form, but then he, he, a lot of the creative burden is taken off him because of Abde, who is really emerging at Real Betis, and not to mention Yusuf El Nesiri as well. So on paper, uh, I forgot to even mention Afraf Hakimi. So yeah. <laughs> on paper, this Morocco team is, is the quality team, but mm. when you think about it, I, I always say I'm a betting man. I don't bet against the trends. And, Northern African teams always struggle to translate when they're forced to play or they're playing the African tournament in other parts of Africa. And this competition is in the Ivory Coast. I'm not one to bet against that. So although Morocco do seem like they're coming in as favorites, I wouldn't be surprised if one of the Western African teams really emerge this time around and get the victory. Yeah, and Leger, you know the bookmakers, they have already put out their team because we're getting ready for a big day tomorrow. They have said that Senegal, they're betting on Senegal to, of course, retain their title. Do you agree with that narrative? And if not, who's your team to take it all? That, that's a tough one. Um, I just said that I can't go against the trends, and the trend is that it's, it's the last seven competitions, it's been seven new winners, so I can't go and say that a team is going to now retain, especially when you think about you know, their talisman, Sadio Mane, how influential he was in the last tournament. For him now to be outside of European football, same as Edward Mendy, the best goalkeeper in the tournament, uh, for them to be outside of European football, I'm not quite sure of the motivation or how sharp they are coming into the tournament. So I'm not quite sure if they will get it done. I was banking on Nigeria a lot, but I think the recent losses of Boniface and Ndidi, I think, will hamper them a bit. So right now, I'm, I'm not quite sure. I know I'm usually the guru, I, well, not usually, I am the guru. <laughs> So, uh, oh, but yeah. I'm not going to put all of my eggs in one basket right now because of the <laughs> uncertainties around the squad. I don't bet blindly. That's not what gurus I, I, do. I, I, I'm just oh, wondering dear. why Ricardo is chuckling. 
Oh I'm dear, not, I just sure. said oh dear. <laughs> I, I mean... It, anyway, anyway <laughs> Ricardo, Move along. In, in, a, in addition to following AFCON, uh, Liz, you will also be analyst for the ISA Schoolboy Football Scholastic and All-Star Exhibition Games on Saturday. What, what can we expect from that? Yeah, I think we'll expect some good football, you know, some of the best youth players across the island, you know, playing in um, the respective games. You know, the Scholastic game is players that may have missed out a bit on being named to the All-Star team, but they're being recognized because they've managed to couple their good football play with good schoolwork as well, which is a difficult thing to do. You know, you as a former student athlete yourself, Sir Lance, and you as well, Ricardo, you know, Ricardo so successful in his stints in sports at the high school level, so he would know how difficult it can be. And look at him now, he's here, he's brilliant, you know. Are you trying to get a raise? Huh? <laughs> no, not right now. But, um, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, uh, I, I think it can be a really good opportunity to showcase. I'm sure there'll be a lot of scouts around, and they won't only be around for the All-Star game, you know, the All-Manning versus Alda Costa. You know, that, that's going to be a good one, I think. It usually is, usually is full of goals. And I'm looking forward to covering it on Saturday. Yeah, and a good lid to put on a schoolboy football season that was tremendous. Yeah, there was so much quality in the schoolboy football season. As I always say, year on year, you know, I've been following schoolboy football for basically as long as I can remember watching football. And I think year on year, we're seeing the, how the improvement of football in Europe especially has filtered down into the coaches here and it's led to a lot of quality tactical approaches, a lot of quality players as well shining through. Um, so it, it was definitely a very good year of schoolboy football and I'm e expecting it to get even better in upcoming years. Yeah, Art Lish, always great having you uh, live sitting on the set with us here on the Sports Max Zone. Um, we look forward to your coverage of uh, the All-Star Scholastic Games on Saturday. Live from the National Stadium on the home of champions. And as we said earlier in the segment, uh, presenting to you on the home of champions, the Africa Cup of Nations for the next few weeks. Live exclusively on Sportsmax and Sportsmax 2. We go to break. Back with more on The Zone after this. Looking at the good, but load of supporters from school and community too. People nothing at the stand, some are listening to radio, but some are watching on TV too. Country and turn United.